Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding the Radio Data System. In this presentation, we'll provide a short technical introduction to the Radio Data System, or RDS, and explain how RDS is tested. The Radio Data System, commonly abbreviated RDS, is a method of embedding digital information into analog FM broadcast signals, and is defined in IEC Standard 62106. RDS has been widely implemented in automotive radio slash entertainment systems and is found, although less often, in portable or tabletop radios. RDS is primarily used to send information about music or talk programs, but can also be used to send traffic information as well. RDS is a very flexible system capable of sending many different types of information, but the information encoded into the broadcast signal and the information processed or displayed by the receiver will vary between broadcasters and receivers. Note that in North America, a slightly different version called the Radio Data Broadcast System is used, but this system is almost entirely compatible with RDS, and will point out any important differences as we come across them in this presentation. Let's start by looking at how RDS information is encoded into the baseband spectrum of a stereo FM signal. Stereo FM consists of a main mono channel between 30 Hz and 15 kHz. A pilot tone at 19 kHz is used to indicate the presence of the stereophonic difference signal. This signal is located between 23 kHz and 53 kHz with a suppressed carrier at 38 kHz, which is the second harmonic of the pilot tone. RDS data is transmitted using an additional subcarrier at 57 kHz, which is the third harmonic of the pilot tone. This signal is modulated using binary phase shift keying at a data rate of 1187.5 bits per second. And after filtering, the RDS subcarrier occupies a bandwidth of approximately 5 kHz. The digital information in the RDS subcarrier is encoded into groups, each of which contains four blocks. These blocks are each 26 bits long and contain 16 information bits and 10 check bits that are used for error detection or correction. Different types of data or messages can be encoded into these data blocks and we'll spend most of the rest of this presentation going over the most important messages. Some of these messages contain information that's used internally by the receiver, and some contain information that's displayed to the end user. In addition, some of these messages are required for correct operation of RDS, but many of them are optional. Optional messages are ones that may or may not be transmitted by a particular broadcaster, or ones that may or may not be processed by a particular receiver. Most of the messages in RDS are repeated periodically, with more important messages being transmitted more frequently. The 10 most common RDS data types are program identification, program service name, radio text, program type name, alternative frequency, clock time and date, traffic program and traffic announcement, enhanced other networks, and open data applications. In the following slides, we'll provide a brief description of each and explain how each element is normally used. The most important and the most frequently transmitted RDS data type is PI or program identifier. This is a four digit hexadecimal value that uniquely identifies a station or a program. In most cases, a PI will correspond to the program being sent by a single transmitter and received in a single geographical area. PI can, however, be shared among transmitters. In this example, all three of these transmitters are on different frequencies in different geographical areas, but they share the same PI code because they're all simulcasting the same program. That is, the audio they are sending is the same. The use of PI enables a receiver to automatically switch frequencies, or retune, when reception on the current frequency is poor. 
For example, an RDS radio traveling along this route could automatically change receive frequency and stay with the same program as it moves between coverage areas. It's also important to keep in mind that the received hexadecimal PI codes are not directly displayed on the receiver. Another basic RDS parameter is the program service name, which is normally displayed on the radio. This consists of up to eight alphanumeric characters that identify the program, and these characters usually show a user-friendly station ID. Many receivers will store or cache this parameter along with the associated PI code, since this enables the receiver to display the program name immediately after receiving the program identification, which is transmitted much more frequently than the program service name. Radio text enables messages of up to 32 or 64 characters to be displayed on the receiver. This is most often used to show program information, headlines, URLs, phone numbers, advertisements, etc. Unlike PS, radio text usually changes dynamically during a program. Older receivers and receivers with only a single line display will usually scroll the radio text across the screen. But larger, more modern receivers will often show the entire text at once. Over time, there have been several enhancements to the basic radio text function, such as Radio Text Plus, which enables defining fields within a message. This in turn enables the information to be displayed with a given format, such as showing the artist name, song name, album name, etc., as fields rather than a simple block of unformatted text. PTY is the program type and shows the category or genre of the current program, for example, news, sports, etc. PTY is typically displayed along with PS and RT. In addition to displaying the type of program, PTI also enables searching for radio programs based on their type. Note that the mapping of PTY numbers to types is different between RDS and RBDS. RBDS defines some PTY types to support common North American radio genres, such as country, hip-hop, college radio, etc. An additional related element is PTYN, which can be used to further define the program type. For example, football, rather than the more generic sports. PTYN, however, is not displayed on many receivers and cannot be used for station tuning. The alternative frequencies element is a list of frequencies transmitting the same program in the same or adjacent areas. This list allows the receiver to automatically retune or switch frequencies when signal reception is poor or when signal strength is low. Thus, it allows uninterrupted reception. This is particularly helpful in the case of a vehicle or car radio since this function avoids potentially distracting manual intervention by the driver. The CT parameter can be used to synchronize the receiver clock with the date and time transmitted by the station. Note that the accuracy of the synchronization is only on the order of about one-tenth of a second. In addition to being used for synchronization, this parameter also enables the receiver to display the date and time transmitted by the station. The time itself is sent in UTC, but an offset parameter enables the receiver to adjust the display to reflect the current time zone. It's worth noting, however, that the CT parameter is not as widely used as it once was. Most modern car receivers now get time and date via GPS, which was not available when RDS was first defined. In addition, many stations currently do not send reliable CT information, and do not send the proper time offset. Next we'll discuss how RDS sends traffic information, which was one of the original RDS design goals. The TP, or Traffic Program bit, is used to indicate that a program is able to switch from its normal content to sending traffic information. The TA, or Traffic Announcement bit, is used to signal to a receiver that a traffic announcement is being transmitted at that time. 
The receiver can then automatically switch to playing the traffic announcement, as well as take actions such as pausing other programming, increasing volume, etc. Note that some car GPS navigation systems can receive and process traffic information received over RDS. Traffic information is also one of the main applications of the EON or Enhanced Other Networks parameter. EON is used to update information in the receiver regarding services or programs other than the one currently being received. For example, this stored information could be used by a receiver to find and switch to another station carrying traffic programs when the receiver sees that the traffic announcement bit has been set, but that the currently tuned program does not contain traffic information. Our final topic is ODA, or Open Data Applications. This is a flexibly definable set of elements that allow new applications to be developed and implemented within the radio data system. The first implementation of this was the Traffic Management Channel, which allows the transfer of more complex traffic information. The formatting of radio text that we mentioned earlier in this presentation is also enabled via ODA. A third example is enhanced radio text, which enables the radio text to be sent using different alphabets and character sets. ODA is widely implemented on modern receivers and is a core component in the upcoming RDS-2 standard. Not only will ODA allow new features in RDS-2, but there are plans to re-implement certain basic RDS features using ODA. Testing RDS functionality in receivers is done using vector signal generators to create FM stereo broadcast signals that contain an RDS subcarrier. The RF output of the generator is then input to the receiver, either via a cable or broadcast over the air. The signal is transmitted continuously in real time and the user can define which RDS messages are sent, as well as the contents or parameters within those messages. In addition, some generators can add noise or interferes to the signal to test the receiver under more realistic or more challenging conditions. Let's end with a brief summary. The radio data system is a technology used to transmit textual and other information to a receiver within an existing FM broadcast channel. This data is encoded into a special subcarrier located just above the analog FM stereo signal. The most common types of data sent via RDS are station and program name, general text information, and traffic information. RDS is supported in desktop and portable receivers, but it's particularly helpful for in-vehicle or car radios. In addition to being able to receive traffic information, RDS enables the receiver to automatically switch to alternative frequencies when reception is poor, and this minimizes the need for driver interaction. And finally, we briefly explained how RDS can be tested using a vector signal generator that transmits an FM stereo signal containing user-configured RDS messages. This concludes our presentation, Understanding the Radio Data System. If you'd like to learn more about broadcast standards, how they're tested, or signal generators from Rody and Schwartz, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit us at rody-schwartz.com.